Hi, I'm Dr. Sue Roppy. This brief presentation supports the work of the Rethinking Education Conference, and it's based on my work across many years, many career paths, and several countries. I lived in Australia for a while and was an academic at Western Sydney University. It is particularly focused on the chapter I wrote on education for a book that was published by Routledge last year, which was entitled Creating the World We Want to Live In, and was the work of seven positive psychologists. I was absolutely thrilled to read the Times Education Committee report that was published in June this year, because that report was saying in a much more comprehensive and detailed way the same things that I was saying in that chapter. And the main thing that came over was that education policy in this country does not meet the needs of the 21st century, neither for people and the young people and their futures, nor the planet. And many of our young people they estimate up to 30% are being left behind. And we know there are increasing communities who are in poverty and despair. This is just not right. In schools, there is less and less creativity, less and less critical thinking, and less and less collaboration. And although children are all different with different strengths, somehow education is homogenous. It's about everybody being expected to do the same things. We constantly underestimate kids and their potential. And some of our kids who've got amazing abilities in some areas, that is just never picked up in our schools. And those young people who are not seen as contributing to academic excellence, because so much of the work is about uh, reaching high level academic scores, they're marginalized and excluded even though they may be the most vulnerable and have the most need to belong and feel safe. My teaching career included teaching young people who had social and emotional behavioural difficulties, and many of them had good reasons. They'd suffered adverse childhood experiences, and yet schools were unable to actually see the potential that was there in virtually all of them. We also know that mental health is at an all-time low, I was involved with the Australian Federal Scoping Study on Student and School Wellbeing, and we found by looking internationally at the international ev evidence that schools who focus on well-being as, as the core of a school have happier students and staff. It's a, it's a no-brainer, really. They have more pro-social behaviour. And of course, when children are happy to come to school, there are better outcomes for learning. We also know that for many of our young people who have access to the internet, knowledge is available to touch of a button. What we need to do is ensure that they have the critical thinking and evaluation skills to be able to look at that knowledge and to know whether or not it's legitimate and factual. Teachers are incredibly important, but they need to move away from being a fount of knowledge to being a facilitator of learning and a mentor for all students. We also need to move away from doing things individually so that young people are constantly comparing themselves to each other, and many of them not feeling that they're good enough. Project-based collaborative learning is more motivating, more engaging, more fun, and has better outcomes if it's well thought through. And our assessment systems do not inform people about what young people can do. It just gives scores on, on limited amounts of knowledge and application, and it's dependent on short-term memory. And if we're thinking about levelling up, many of the young people who pass exams do it because they've been uh, receiving expensive tutoring. When Ofsted determine a school's vision, it can be about the scores that young people can attain. It's not about pupils, their differences, their needs or their potential. The other thing that the report says, and I also think this is critically important, is that learning begins as soon as the child is born. And 40% of the difference between those children who achieve in schools and those who don't is in place by the time a child actually goes to school. There needs to be a much, much stronger focus on the early years, 
an education system that, that is aligned with healthy child development. And before the pandemic, I was lucky enough to be able to do a TED talk based on this. It's called School as Family. We need a system that encourages independence for young people, giving them agency, giving them joy in learning, creativity, and looking at the value of diversity. We need a system that values the importance of connection with each other and our shared humanity. We need an education that develops a world that is about we, what's best for all of us, not just me. So much of our education system has been about learning to know. And we have a knowledge base that is amazing. We can now do things like space travel, the genome project, the internet, that would have been in the realm of magic and miracles a couple of hundred years ago. But we do not seem to have moved very far in learning about wisdom, learning to be and learning to live together. We need to have something that is better, better for all of our children and their futures. And this is a little video clip, which is a call to action to make the world the kind of place that we all want to live in. We believe everyone is entitled to a life in which they can flourish and find joy in their existence. And that's why we've written this book. We wanted to explore what the science and stories of positive psychology could tell us about how to create a world where all people have the best possible chance of well-being. This includes not only what individuals might do, but what we need from our communities, institutions and governments. We've been asking searching questions and have challenged what many take for granted but we hold on to the science that says we are born to connect, that happiness can be found by having meaning in our lives and that empathy for others is hardwired until it is broken, but then can also be relearned. The pandemic itself has often brought out the best in us and we feel the better for it. This little one was born in the middle of the pandemic and is lucky to have our own well-being bubble, loving family, food, shelter, and good health. But what of our future and the world into which she has been born and the future of every other child? This is an ambitious project, idealistic even, but what we have discovered is that many of our fellow citizens are already creating a better world both locally in their own communities and beyond. We just need more of it, and soon. The future of the post-pandemic generation is depending on us. Thank you all for listening.